there's no one quite like Harry Styles. He's released three chart-topping albums as a solo artist, broken countless records as part of one of the best-selling boy bands of all time, won a Grammy, starred in an Oscar-winning film, and, thanks to his boundary-pushing style, became the first man to appear solo on the cover of Vogue. But he very nearly fell at the first hurdle. So how did he get here? This is Harry Styles' The Come Up. Harry Edward Styles was born on the 1st of February 1994 in Redditch, England. When he was a young man, he moved to Holmes Chapel in Cheshire with his parents, Anne and Des, and older sister, Gemma. Harry's family always supported his creative ambitions, and after his granddad gifted him a karaoke machine, he recorded his first ever song, a cover of Elvis Presley's The Girl of My Best Friend. Harry was always a showman, and at nine years old, he gave his first ever public performance, singing My Way by Frank Sinatra at a local pub. The crowd loved him, although they were potentially a little biased. Harry told Entertainment Weekly, I mean, I knew most of them, so I think they were being nice since I was nine. While at Holmes Chapel Comprehensive School, Harry formed a band with his classmates called White Eskimo. In 2009, when Harry was 15, they won a local Battle of the Bands competition, which came with a huge £100 cash prize. To supplement his winnings, Harry started working at the W Mandeville Bakery on Saturdays, but he wasn't content with cleaning baking trays, and on the 11th of April 2010, Harry stepped into an audition room that would change his life forever. Appearing in front of judges Louis Walsh, Nicole Scherzinger and Simon Cowell, Harry performed Train's Hey Soul Sister and an a cappella version of Stevie Wonder's Isn't She Lovely. Louis Walsh famously gave him a no, but with yeses from Nicole and Simon, Harry advanced to the bootcamp stage but failed to progress any further, being dumped out of the competition. It was heartbreak for Harry. But that heartbreak didn't last long though. Spotting something special in Styles, judges Simon and Nicole decided to team him up with four other contestants. Niall Horan, Liam Payne, Louis Tomlinson and Zayn Malik. And just like that, One Direction was formed. The band quickly grew in popularity and on the 12th of December 2010, it was announced they had come third behind Rebecca Ferguson and winner Matt Cardle. In January 2011, just before Harry's 17th birthday, the band signed a recording contract with Simon Cowell's Psycho Records and it wasn't long before the world went One Direction crazy. Their debut single, What Makes You Beautiful, swiftly went to number one in the UK single charts. Their first studio album, Up All Night, followed just two months later and made 1D the first British pop group to have their debut album reach number one in the US. They were an instant success. Over the next four years, the band became megastars. They released four more albums, Take Me Home, Midnight Memories, Four, and Made in the AM, which all debuted at number one in the UK. They sold more than 70 million albums worldwide, won seven Brit Awards, starred in their own documentary and went on four world tours, with their Where We Are tour becoming the highest grossing of all time by a vocal group. But all good things must come to an end. On a fateful day in 2015, One Direction fans were dealt a killer blow. Zayn Malik decided to leave the band, and just a few months later, the group announced that they were going on a hiatus. Their last concert was on October 31st, 2015 in the Sheffield Arena in the UK, with the group officially going on hiatus in January 2016. No one knew what was coming next. But after some well-deserved time off, Harry quickly found his feet again. He signed a solo record contract with Columbia Records and he quickly got to work on his debut album. And in April 2017, at the age of 23, Harry released his first single, Sign of the Times. The song peaked at number one on the UK singles chart and number four on the Billboard Hot 100, with the music video winning Harry his first solo Brit Award. His self-titled album swiftly followed, debuting at number one in the US and the UK, paving the way for his first solo headlining concert tour, Harry Styles' Live On Tour, which ran from September 2017 to July 2018. Despite the success, Harry still didn't feel like he'd found his true sound. He told Zane Lowe in 2019, I can hear all of the places where I feel like I was playing it safe because I didn't want to get it wrong. Clearly, Harry still felt like he had some work to do. While juggling his musical ambitions, Harry also branched out into the world of acting. He landed a role in Christopher Nolan's World War II epic, Dunkirk. Harry had always been a heartthrob, but after nearly a decade in the public eye, he was finally able to express himself in the way he wanted, and he quickly became known for his progressive style. In 2018, he began modeling for Gucci, and in 2019, he co-hosted the Met Gala wearing boundary-pushing pearl earrings and a transparent blouse. He was quickly becoming the poster boy for gender-fluid fashion. 
While this was all going on, Harry released his second solo album, Fine Line, which topped the US Billboard 200 chart, recording the highest ever first week sales by a British male act in the US. What followed was a Grammy Award, a second worldwide solo concert tour, a Brit Award for his song Watermelon Sugar, and his third album, Harry's House, which came out in May 2022. It debuted at number one in the US and the UK, with Harry becoming the first British solo artist to have four tracks from the same album concurrently charting within the US top 10. Harry's written songs on all three of his solo albums and with starring roles in Don't Worry Darling and My Policeman, plus a collaborative collection with Gucci, 2022 was a busy year for the superstar. And with Love On Tour extended for another year, it's clear that it truly is Harry's world. We're just all living in it.